Good morning, everybody. Here is your calc lesson for today. Um, as you look, this is the list of derivatives that we should have um, gotten through on Friday. But as you can see, these were some of the first derivatives we went through, this one and this one that we proved. These other two, um, we could go over the proof later next week if you want, or you could just take my word for it that these are the, indeed the derivatives for um, those functions. Those are derivatives that you will need to memorize before the end of the unit. And if you look for patterns, I think you'll be able to figure them out. But we'll have these on the board so you can look back at them and in your notes regularly for now. Okay, so the next thing I want you to do is to take a look at these two questions and think about what is the fastest growing function we've studied and what is the slowest growing function we have studied probably helps to think about what we're studying in this unit also. So if you think about it, our fastest growing functions are exponentials and our slowest growing functions are logarithms. With that in mind, I'd like you to take a few moments and to go through these on your own um, and see if you can figure out what the answers to these would be without a calculator. I'll give you a moment to pause here. All right, hopefully you've had enough time to take a look at these problems, and let's talk about what the answers are. Hopefully you got the answer of 2 for this problem, negative 2, because 4 to the negative half would be 1 16th. This one is undefined, and log base 10 of 10 would be 1 log base 0, or sorry, log base 10 of 1 would be 0, and when we have negative 10, that would also be undefined. Then for ln of e, um, that would be equal to 1. ln of 1 would be 0, because e to the 0 gives us 1, and to get 1 half, let's think about that one a little bit. Let's think about the rules. That would be equal to ln of 1 minus ln of 2. ln of 1, we said, was 0. And think about ln of 2. Remember, e is just about 2.7. So we're thinking about what would go on 2.7 to get 2. So if you think about that, um, we're going to be getting just a little bit Uh, it will definitely be a positive number. So if we're taking 0 minus a positive number, we're going to be getting overall a negative answer. All right, so let's keep those things in mind as we work on the next problems. Moving on to the next page, we're going to think about how to do this problem. And it's going to come in handy for um, an upcoming part of the lesson. So let's just review this. So if we're going to be figuring out what this equals, we're going to be thinking about um, substituting, first of all, 1 and then 4, and working the problem twice. So if we substitute in 1, we get this um, step of the problem. So let's think about what this is equal to. So if we follow the rules of logarithms, we know that this uh, quotient is equal to the subtracting of these two logs. Then we can evaluate the log of 1 to get 0, and we still have the log of 4. Then a little bit of simplifying, and that leads us to this question. Since we know e is right around 2.718, um, what power of e would give us 4? If we think about 2 squared, that would be a little bit bigger than, that's 4. So e to some power, that power would have to be between 1 and 2. So we know that we have a number that's greater than 1. And so that leads us to knowing that we have 1 plus a negative bigger than 2 because we're multiplying 2 times a larger negative number. And so that means our answer is going to be negative. 
when we do this problem and substitute in 4, we um, get this. So I believe that's supposed to be a 4 plus 8. And then our next step would take us here. When we substitute in 4, and then we know that my 4 is drawn in, um, but this is actually going to just be equal to 1. All right, keep those in mind for a future problem. Let's take a quick look and refresh our memory of the log rules that we know from previous classes. The product of the logs is the sum of those logs. The product or the log of a quotient is the logs of those differences or the difference of the logs. And then the power rule is just turns out to be multiplication. So it follows the same rules that you remember from exponents. Multiplication gives us addition, division gives us subtraction, and a power is multiplication. All right, so we're gonna do an example of a problem that we're heading towards. Problems in your homework won't be quite be as difficult as this one, but it's a good one to think about and it kind of ties some things together. So for finding extreme values and inflection points, we need to take a derivative. So as we do this, we have to remember that since this is a product, we have to do the product rule. And since y is on its own, we don't have to worry about implicit differentiation. The derivative of y is y prime. So we have first, times the derivative of the second, and this comes from our rule that we had before, that the derivative of ln over x would be 1 fourth. And this 1 fourth comes from our chain rule. So we think of this, we know the derivative of ln of x would be 1 over this, so that's the reciprocal. And then once again, the 1 fourth is from the chain rule. All right, then plus the second, that's this part here, times the derivative of the first, which would be 2x. Now that we have the derivative done, it's just simplifying the algebra. So our next step, um, we've just multiplied through to simplify the algebra. And then we can look here and see if we type the derivative into the calculator, we do get the same thing, and we get the same, we get values uh, for the derivative and our function, so it just checks and sees that our derivative is correct. So since we're looking for critical points, we need to know where the derivative is equal to zero, where it's undefined, and where the endpoints are, just like we did back um, several units ago for semester when we looked at these um, with polynomial and other functions. We know our function will be undefined if our ln would be let if our x over 4 would be less than 0, which would mean where x is less than 0. And so our endpoints or our boundaries would be where x is 0. And then we just need to solve our equation for x to find out what x values would make our function equal to 0. So using the product, zero product property, we can split these into two. This one's already done for us. And then this one, we just have to do some algebra, subtracting the 1 and dividing by 2, and then um, calculating. So the way to calculate the natural log, to undo this, to find x, we exponentiate both sides. So when we take e to the ln, we know this will undo itself. And in our next step, we end up with this written in equivalent form equals x over 4. And now finally solving for x, we get 4 over the square root of e equals x. Now we need to test those um, in our intervals to find out where our derivative is positive and negative. So as we think about those, um, when we try our test values, this might look very familiar to you. We already tested these earlier in the lesson. We knew if we have a test value of 1, our derivative is going to be negative. And if we have a test value of 4, that's going to give us a positive answer. Since we know we have a negative and a positive, we know that tells us that y is decreasing on our interval from 0 to 4 over square root of e. 
and increasing on our interval from 4 square root of e to infinity. So we know this was our derivative. Our next step is to take the second derivative. The derivative of x is 1, and now we have another product rule. First times the derivative of the second. Once again, the derivative of this would be 1 over x over 4, which is 4 over x. And then by the chain rule, we multiply by the derivative of this, which is 1 fourth, plus the second times the derivative of the first. We simplify our algebra. That leaves us here with 2, and the x's divide out, um, plus writing this with our properties, 2 times the ln of x over 4. And simplifying further, we're left with 3 plus 2 ln of x over 4. We want to find our critical points. So once again, we want to see where our second derivative is equal to 0, undefined, or has endpoints. We know that we're undefined where x over 4 is less than 0. And then we want to solve for 0 here. We set our derivative equal to 0. Um, we subtract our 3 and divide by 2. And we exponentiate once again. And this tells us um, that x would be equal to 1 or equal to 4 over the square root of e to the third. So if we take a look at this in our um, chart again, we would probably use a calculator to get an estimate of what this number is, um, which is totally okay. This would probably be in, in a calculator section with that value. And so we try our test values and check and see um, our sine of y prime would be negative and or 4 is our sine would be positive. So we know our, our function is going to be concave down in this uh, interval and concave up in that interval. All right, so um, that concludes our notes for today over these problems. Once again, your homework isn't going to be nearly as complex as these two examples, but it's a good idea to look back at them. Um, remember your rules for derivatives. These rules will come in handy for the problems that you're doing in your lesson. My computer decided to take a break there. Um, go, and these will be helpful for you. Uh, go ahead and do your homework that's posted on Google Classroom, and maybe we will see you Tuesday.